Alberto López Vargados, anthropologist and professor of the University of Barcelona, and he's the main researcher of this project called Traders, which is a very current study and project, a pioneer study uh, from the Spanish perspective, talking about the connections of different museums of Catalonia, a study of traceability, but also with the study of incidents and dialogue with different results that will be developed and have been developed, uh, but it will also uh, be developed next year. So let us hear him. Well, first of all, good afternoon, everybody. Those of you who are here, thank you for your presence. And the Ethnological Museum of uh, Barcelona, represented by his director, thank you for welcoming us. This is the third edition, and I hope it's not the last one, because in a way, I want to think that we'll take advantage of a common reflection such as the one we are starting now, and we've been doing for a long time. My intervention will be quite institutional. My task is to present a project, and we are convinced that this is a pioneer project. At least we are convinced that it's pioneer in Spain. And this project is framed in this spirit of time, which was open from the Black Lives Matter matters movement and also the different memories in public spaces and this uh, metropolis with uh, colonial legacy. Of course, the project is the result of this background, is fed from this and is growing from this and it wants to participate because it wants to offer some of the first examples and a reflection around repairing and how this repairing can happen from the collections of public museums of Barcelona that have been selected according to the quantity and quality of the collections and the importance of the colonial collections without, uh, not without debate within the project and outside the project. But more or less, this is the idea and the spirit of our project. In summary, we have opened for some time a series of reflection from a European perspective about repair, how this repair has to happen, museums, construction of collective memory, and of course, these are museums centered in this process of repair. Up until now, I don't think uh, we are exaggerating if we say that museums have been very not very sensible to the memory of the past uh, and collections, especially those coming from the colonies. Most of them are aware of the fact that, in a way, we have to reformulate the discourse related to the presence of these minorities in the metropolis. And this project wants to participate, well, wants to offer instruments to the communities and museum institutions so if they think it's convenient to prepare to unify and to transform the discourse that museums are using around these collections to which we will refer. So more or less this is um, to skip on this um, introduction. I prefer to be synthetic. And then when I present the project, I usually use other arguments that will I will explain here. The, main objective of our project is to gather information about the origins and conditions of arrival of a series of pieces and collections that are currently in some public museums of Catalonia. So the idea is of research from a conventional perspective, which is integrated within these studies that everybody talks about in Europe, provenance research that just recognize a task that museums as institutions had to do a long time ago, according to their principles, which is uh, do some research about their own collections, but also due to the cuts in the different budgets of museums for the last 25, 30 years, the same museums find 
uh, difficulties uh, for their own personnel. And in a way, we have to see how this has been outsourced because we are deploying uh, research uh, that the museum had to develop and deploy. But the reality it is it's not like this. Uh, museums, some of them with exceptions, are not able to take on this dimension which is central from a pedagogic, didactic point of view. And this is, we can say whether this is good or not, is delegated or transfer in this case to a group made mainly by researchers of the university and different universities, some of them Catalan and others such as the UNED. And the objective basically is to do provenance research on these collections and to prepare and gather this information to systematize it. And the first step is dissemination and making it available to three different actors with the hope that they will coordinate among themselves and they will reach an agreement, but it's not for us to control this agreement because it's just to reach these agreements. These actors are, on the one hand, museums, museums that are initially, when we thought about our project, because it was a prejudice, you cannot deny it, we had the suspicion that we will encounter difficulties in the museums. So the idea that they come from outside and they open the boxes that we uh, had not opened, there was some resistance, passive or active resistance, to an initiative such as the one that we wanted to develop. And with very few exceptions, it has not been like this. The welcome has been extremely cordial, even, I would say, comfortable for us, because what we encounter in many cases was, uh, from an institutional perspective, the realization that this had to be done. And if it has to be done, it's better that it's done now. So if we start from this initial uh, refusal, I think that now, and reluctance, I think that we have encountered more difficulties than we thought. So the first main actor is the institution where these collections exist. And another one are those institutions and public organs of the ex-colonies that in a way have responsibilities on this heritage and uh, assets in their country or part of the collections that are uh, part of the old colony. Therefore, I think that we have to inform the general direction of heritage or patrimony of three of the colonies that are uh, central to the project, Morocco uh, and Guinea Equatorial. Some of them have been done already. This is a project which will last for three years. So this is a way of describing a project um, that is the first stage. Therefore, this project cannot achieve yet, not even provisional first results. So the first actor is the museum, a second actor is for the colony, uh, in order to give you an example that the Ministry of Culture of Philippines has to note that in Catalonia are two important Filipino collections, which one of them is this museum, and the other one's the Victor Olague of Villanova, we think it's important for them to know because we are convinced that they are not informed or at least they are not confirmed in a general way about the scope and the quality and also the conditions that allow the arrival of these collections to these museums. Therefore, the second actor, which is fundamental, and then a third actor, and in these studies of provenance, research and repair, it's an actor which is fluctuating which is usually mentioned, and the most important factor is to count on them, are the diaspora communities. Those communities that come in from the old colony live here. 
and they are citizens of our country and part of them in legal conditions. The other one, unfortunately, not, but we look forward for them to change. And often they are not aware of the existence of this collection. They had not been informed about these collections. And in a way, they're often uh, mobilizing element of the repairing processes. But once we start this repairing process, since these agreements are bilateral between the states, they are actors which become uncomfortable. And in these repairing agreements, it's difficult to know what to do with them. And they end up, I don't know uh, why, uh, on the margins on these processes of repair. So three actors. And our will, our wish is, uh, I don't know if this time or next time, that they don't feel marginalized and part of the process. Therefore, the project is gathering information, systematizing the information. This information wants to create and organize a series of dissemination activities, transparency, etc. There is an exhibition, there is a catalog that somebody has conceived, there is a biennial, so they incorporate a series of projects providing content to this. But the most important aspect and the political will in which they are framed is just this one. We are researchers. Most of us have experience working, maybe not directly with these collections, but working on the cultures that were part of these colonies, in this case, Spain. We have a specialist in Guinea and Morocco, uh, not so many of Filipinas, but I think that here we have two or three people with some expertise. And this is the result of the research that they've done, and we gather all this information and we place it on the hands of the actors, hoping that they will agree. They will agree. So we look forward to the deployment beyond the project. It's not our task to do it, but we want to offer everything available for the actors to agree among them. If I can make some summary or synthesis of this project, I think that more or less I think that I have been quite clear. Therefore, which are the ex-colonies, which are the objectives, which are these countries that we are talking about, which are part of uh, our project and where these uh, collections come from. Three colonies, I've already mentioned them, uh, two of them related to Africa, uh, not by chance, most of the uh, members of the project, traffickers in Catalan or traders in English, uh, are related to Africa. They provide a lot of importance to Africa because most of the researchers coming from this African context in the University Anthropology of History, almost all of them are from Guinea and, and Morocco, also the north part of the protectorate that was object of a more intense uh, colonizing process and the Spanish colonization was from the Sahara more than from Tetuan. Therefore, if we talk about the Spanish colonies, we talk about the protectorate of the reef, which was a colony until 1956. And we also added the Philippines uh, to this context. And this project, when we designed the project, we discussed whether Philippines had to belong or not to the project. First thing taken into account uh, due to some intellectual humbleness that we had not any expert in Philippines, in the Philippines. Philippinologist, I think is the name. We didn't have one. So this is uncharted territory, virgin territory, and we don't have a previous knowledge uh, of this research. But precisely because Philippine, the Philippines was the greatest uh, island forbidden and the colony, the presence of uh, Spain in the Asian Southeast or the Pacific was the big forgotten one. And the fact that we had uh, collections from the Philippines that we had already knowledge in Catalonia meant and we reached the conclusion that incorporating the Philippines was a good thing. We did not incorporate the American context to the project due to a couple of reasons. Maybe you can correct me. 
if we thought that the Philippines was a little known territory, it was easy to make a mistake and, and be uninverted. So if you make a well, mistake uh, during your research, it's uh, more difficult to be uh, uninverted uh, uh, or to, to remain un unknown. And this is the most arguable question because it's just like collections coming from pre-Columbian and post-Columbian uh, times in Barcelona are not comparatively, uh, you know, are, cannot be compared to what uh, in, they have in Madrid. They are not as important. So you have to work uh, on uh, American funds. Madrid is a uh, much better uh, place, more logical than Barcelona. Maybe we are wrong, but that's what many people uh, think about that and, and with a, a, a well-based uh, opinion. So well, we incorporated the two uh, most well-known colonies. Sahara was left aside. Sahara is an open affair. It's not a closed affair pending to be solved. And we're in any initiative, scientific initiative, and I have a lot of experience on, on this immediately is uh, you know connected uh, through the or interpreted through the political sphere and it becomes some sort of uh, impossible to solve uh, puzzle Col co uh, qualitative and co and quanti qu qualitative and, qu and qualitatively speaking they were hard to, to, to determine it went beyond the, the political expectations. The Philippines, we did, and we incorporated two different realities that uh, are another part of the Spanish colonial past. Senegal, or Senegal, as you want to call it. Obviously, Senegal was never a Spanish colony. Obviously, it was a French uh, colony. And the fact that uh, there were some Senegalese collections, not extremely important, but some of them had the Senegalese origin and a very important fact that the Senegal and, and Gambian group of people in in, quality, in Catalonia was very important and we thought that it was reasonable to incorporate these Senegalese collections. What we try to do is, you know, play between quality where we're able to, to, to determine collections and the importance of our spokespersons with the Senegambian uh, community. We had important spokespersons, and it, if it was not a, a Spanish colony, we thought that it was necessary to incorporate uh, this this group. We, want, we wanted to incorporate the Senegalese group into the world of, of museums, and then Nigeria. Nigeria we incorporated not because of the amount but, but of, of, of works of art, but the quality of these uh, well, they are very valuable uh, pieces of art. And also, speaking about the bronzes of Benin, there's a big pro project called Restitution of, of uh, Art in Benin. And the most uh, advanced uh, project has to do with the bronzes of Benin. This is happening through a project uh, headed by Hamburg, Hamburg uh, Un the University of Hamburg, but it includes Germany, uh, UK, etc., and this museum, the, the Museum of uh, Ethnology and the Cultures of the World in Barcelona. I think we have two pieces here uh, connected to the treasure, uh, treasure of Benin in 1895. It was an expoliation. And it, since it's an open, uh, highly visible project, internationally speaking, we thought that incorporating, uh, no matter how modest, uh, uh, the, the step of this uh, treasure was in the Catalan context inc incorporated in the case of Benin uh, to show how things are done in the big uh, restitution project that we already have here. Uh, well, we thought that it was uh, good. So colonies uh, are there, and now I'll speak about the museums, okay? Because, uh, well, they are important actors in this project. I'm not following the PowerPoint, even better. If you well, pay attention to the PowerPoint, not to me. Um, so what we have to, to do is, is you know, to, to listen what I say and not to, to watch what I show. Uh, 
uh, a person here uh, prevent this PowerPoint, and I would like to thank him for doing that. But well, in this museum that is hosting us, and we've been working with them for quite a long time, one of the uh, um, beginnings of the projects included the exhibits that we had the privilege of uh, heading in this museum, in this room next to to this one. If the, uh, the military service of Spaniards in uh, Africa, both of them are in the background of, of this project. And we have other things. Gustav Nerin, one of the most uh, uh, popular um, experts in the project, worked on, on, on the memorial, Demo Democratic Memorial uh, Project. And the background uh, is uh, very intense, but we've been working there. And in uh, that respect, um, there was a little to, to explain in the Museum of Cultures of the World, little to, to explain that we uh, didn't know, because we know most things. There was a certain degree of complicity, I think. There was a certain degree of institutional complicity with the goals this project has in, in mind. In Barcelona, we also were able to have to include the, the collaboration of the Museum of, of Natural Science, the old Museum of uh, Zoology. We're speaking about the team formed by anthropologists and historians that uh, well, worked with specimens. We had well, the first meeting with this team, and we had to stop stopping about pieces. They talk about specimens. So it's not just the obligation. Of, well, we have Aida Memba, who's uh, <laughs> the person in, in charge of the research of the Museum of Natural Arts or natural sciences, I'm sorry, but the first operation and the first intellectual operation that we had to, to undertake when approaching this collection was to take a distance from the language we use and adopt a new language, a different language, a language that is directly connected with the kind of collection when we speak about ethnological collections. Well, in Catalonia, are, can be counted by hundreds or, or thousands or a thousand, maybe, uh, not thousands, but a thousand. Out of the analogical uh, collections we, we have in Catalonia, we don't have more than uh, 1,000 pieces. But the specimens uh, in the Natural Museum, we have thousands or are tens of thousands of, of specimens, uh, butterflies, insects, coleopters, uh, well, a bunch of, of, of uh, things. Uh, I studied this in my secondary school, and I had forgotten that language. I had to recuperate it, uh, expressed in a different way. The type of collection and the volume of collections was uh, challenging the type of work we, we uh, normally do. And this was a, a logical challenge that forced us to, to practice approach methodologies to different, uh, to, to, to different collections. If we have time or interest, we can talk about the differences in the approach we had. In Barcelona, these two museums plus the collection, the Sabatepi collection, which is a private collection of Dr. Sabatepi, which can be found at CRAI in the University of the Fine Arts of, of Barcelona. It's a, it includes a, a very interesting uh, set of records uh, of Dr. Sabatepi and a small collection of uh, objects that. Uh, is integrated uh, quite uh, harmonically, harmoniously with the collection the museum, uh, the logical museum has, or that, that you can also find in the rest of uh, museums that hold um, pieces uh, donated or or, or purchased uh, through the uh, actions of Dr. Sabatepi in the Museum of Iwalada, for example. We have the results of or fruits of a donation. So um, then we have uh, uh, museums outside of the metropolitan area of Barcelona. First of all, we have the Dardem Museum in Banyolas, a very special museum connected to the activities, scientific uh, uh, the activities of Mr. Dardem, an old uh, uh, distant uh, activity in the last third of the 19th century, and that was uh, taken to Banyolas in random fashion in 1916 when the, the museum was open. And well, 
we have a difference between uh, the archivistic volume that the museum institutions have in Barcelona, in Barcelona versus the uh, smaller museums. And here uh, we're speaking about the about museums that are lack uh, information uh, around their collections. They have very, very small uh, amount of information or they are lacking information. And that is a good example for the circumstances or the setup of the collection connected to the uh, commercial activity in scientific uh, and, and commercial activity of Dardé. And uh, in the museum, well, the museum determines uh, openly the, determines that it has little uh, information about this collection. So it's very difficult to So all those uh, well, we have little information about how they, they these mu these pieces appeared in the in the uh, Banyolas Museum. We also have uh, the mu big museum connected to Andreu Colomé Montmany, a collector, uh, a big uh, entrepreneur of, of furs and a leather in Europe for for some time. Even some people say that he was the most important uh, in the world. He had different sources of, of uh, uh, supplies in both Morocco or Nigeria. And well, by apparent chance, as uh, usually happens with collector, amongst collectors, he started to you know, connect to, 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 to uh, gather a, a collection connected to, to leather uh, and, and fur, a collection that is connected to, to a strong and difficult administrative uh, regime, a museum. That includes uh, uh, three-headed uh, ownership, uh, the family on the one hand, the big uh, city council, and the government of Catalonia. The uh, administrative uh, circumstances make it or made it very difficult to, to work with them. And the personality of the collectionist, uh, Colombe Monmagne, had a very specific personality, a uh, very polyadric uh, person an extremely interesting person and a person uh, who started collecting at a very early age. And well, this is a museum on which we have a little information. They don't have many uh, records about the circumstances, or at least up until now. Uh, the circumstances, uh, these collections came to, to life. Maybe the interest uh, includes Colomemo uh, Mind, the collector as a paradigmatic uh, character and uh, well, he's uh, a person rather well known in Catalonia, the Museum of uh, uh, Leather in Igualada and La Noia connected to the technique and the industry of, of leather carrying. I'm looking at Feliste because she is the person in charge of working on this collection, highly connected to <coughs> the production of, of local uh, leather products with a little co ethnological collection. Before it was called exotic collection, we could wish to get rid of these words exotic. Uh, maybe we are the most exotic elements uh, and extravagant uh, characters. So this is small ethnological collection. The most interesting component is the element connected to what Jordi Sabate P and Mitkunde. So we will integrate this small but very important Guinean and African collection to the research we do about Ikunde and Jordi Sabate P. And I think that I am only missing one museum, which is the Virtor Balaguer uh, Library Museum from Villa Vila Jodru, a very singular museum connected to the activity of Victor Balaguer a person uh, very well known in, in our country, uh, Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, highly connected to the interests that Victor Balaghi had with the Philippines and uh, with the Filipino collection. That is very interesting that the rival in importance with the Filipino collection that this museum, that our museum has here. And it turned it into a very interesting museum. So I think that I've given you a, a range of possibilities explaining to you the museums and what justifies the incorporation of these museums and not others. 
And before I finish, because I am sure I have to finish, because I ran out of time quite a long time ago. Well, before I finish, just a, an issue that I think is very important uh, that I could be totally sincere about. When we designed this project, we did so on uh, at the end of spring of 2022, right, Jose? If I'm not mistaken, one year and, and some months ago, and as usual in these cases, the project was designed in a hurry, in a rush. I forgot to tell you that the headlines or the institution that support this project are the, the Catalan Agency of Cooperation to the Development of the Government of Catalonia. And this project is co-headed by between Solidaritat OV and Eurom agencies without which uh, this project wouldn't have never would have never uh, happened and Greece most where most of the researchers belong to the, who co-head this this project okay I said this uh, about the co-direction of this project because when we designed it in Raj as I said before we uh, well, pro we were unable to and I'm directly responsible of these uh, initial lackings or missing elements. Well, we, we forgot to include these diasporic communities that are present in, in our country, and that in the initial design of the project were not there, but they maybe were, were they were there with a minor role, not very meaningful role, not very determinant. And many diasporic communities uh, say that this project had to be perceived or probably was perceived that these communities were used as a pretext to co go on with the project. So we asked these communities to, to achieve their uh, support, but uh, then uh, we forget about them. We scientists at the university uh, do our research and we forget about those people who are directly uh, connected to the collections and that uh, gave us uh, an initial support that seems uh, uh, a kind of uh, well, uh, it seems uh, non -con unconditional support and it should be a conditioned support so when we started this, this project we realized that uh, truly these communities were not well represented in our project and the role was not very important we believed that it was necessary to reformulate uh, some of these uh, elements because these uh, communities had to be better represented and uh, that project was part of their, their own roots. Well, we don't really know if we achieved our goal. This is something that we cannot answer or I cannot answer. It's a balance that we'll do at the end of the project. <coughs> and once again, um, communities will have to determine if they have been uh, uh, treated as flower pots of a project or or they've been uh, incorporated not with the dignity they deserve but with, with enough uh, dignity and uh, the crystallization of this uh, will was the transformation of a uh, group that we had in the project we called it goas which is the group of uh, of a group of observation action and follow-up of the project that was uh, uh, that was given some of the attributions and responsibilities that required uh, uh, a, a, tra a, a contract transformation we had to hire the members of this organism so it required or this required an important set of, of information we have the logistics of creating this transformation which is rather complex but it was necessary to, to do it and basically the goes as it is designed now it's an organization that has to uh, watch over the different uh, products in the widest uh, meaning projects or elements that, that stem from this this project including uh, social networks uh, where some of the members of the project or the goas members can be uh, invited to to participate or to intervene while controlling the uh, discourse uh, or or the dissemination of information through that all, all possible pathways and taking uh, an important uh, role um, considering 
all the all the pieces that are going to be part of the collections, and we uh, present the results of the our selection to to Goa so that they can approve them and to determine which are the pieces or specimens that the most relevant elements that need to be studied. And an important role is the decision on the uh, biennial of colonial art, which is the end of the project, the closing of the project, where we have, will have to choose um, curators that, that take care of it. And the goals will be the jury of the different alternatives presented in the uh, contest in order to determine which one will be in charge of the uh, well, biennial. And we believe that uh, we won't be marginalized because uh, uh, we are the origin of it all. But we have to have a, a certain degree of control. But in Nutshell, there will have to be uh, conceptual and artistic uh, decisions Goas uh, will be the, the determining group, uh, so that this biennial uh, includes a first session and a succession of future biennials that can, in one way or another, give a continuity to this project that we are now designing, <laughs> that intends to be an area, a meeting point between different uh, actors that are now participating in these uh, uh, processes uh, to, to repair the, the colonial memory in this critical re, uh, reivindication, trying to overcome the amnesia and to uh, offer a critical discourse around some collections that are part of our legacy that oftentimes we either have a, have a false neutrality on or simply we or they are stay in the storage rooms of museums without anyone can open uh, the and, and see what we can do with these collections. Here the project is good for, for opening uh, these boxes uh, to put the, the focus on on, 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 on on these elements so that everyone can participate and, and express a, an opinion. Well, welcome. Thank you.